This is an M-rated game, so viewer discretion is advised. Darksiders 2. I have never played the original Darksiders, mainly because this is the first time it's ever come to a Nintendo platform, and that's the only type of system that I've owned. I thought this was going to be another one of those hack and slash games that I've seen on other platforms, but I was very pleasantly surprised that the gameplay was more like The Legend of Zelda. Now the game as you play is Death, one of the horsemen of the apocalypse. After fighting a guy named Crowfather, he gets sent to another world, and that's where your adventure really starts. The graphics look great. There are many different environments for you to explore. The only downside I found was the frame rate. However, it was far from a deal breaker. While there was a lot of places to explore, the worlds were usually broken down into areas. It was often smaller areas that would make up a bigger world. I have to assume they did this so they wouldn't have to load entire areas. But all the stopping and starting did kind of break the flow a little but only slightly. The gameplay was really fun. There were many open areas for you to interact with, but when it came to the dungeons, while it was open a lot of the times for you to explore, it really was a linear path looking like a free choice. Most of the time where you had to go was pretty laid out, so it was very easy to figure out where to go, even in huge open areas. And that was due to the map or just them showing you where to go. In the dungeons you'll crawl on walls, hang onto beams, and run quickly across the walls to find your way through the dungeons. There are also puzzles for you to solve. Much like The Legend of Zelda, it will block off a path until you figure out how to use the object or objects in the room to progress. The game didn't have the sense of cleverness of The Legend of Zelda franchise when it came to the puzzles, but it did try, and I give it props for that. The bosses will tend to follow the same kind of pattern that Zelda's bosses do, where you have to use the tricks that you learned in the dungeons to beat them. The ways that you had to take them down were sometimes very clever, and I like the fact that most of the time it was more about finding out the trick to getting to their weak spot than just hacking and slashing on them. There were a lot of weapons, sometimes you would need to be leveled up to a certain point to use them. Now they weren't always useful, but it was always a balancing game on which weapon stats would be the most useful at the time. Sometimes quicker yet less powerful weapons were the best, and sometimes the opposite was true. It all depended on the way you were playing the game. And I love the freedom to decide, and the real sense of difference in the choice you make. Another thing I found great was the warping ability. You could warp to certain spots that you've been to before. Now you might say that's pretty standard, but not in the way they do it. It lets you warp out of the dungeon right before a big fight, get a healing potion, and then warp right back to where you were. Normally games would put you back at the entrance, but this game puts you right back where you just left. It was very convenient. The developers used the Wii gamepad in good ways, like being able to easily switch between weapons, looking at a map, or assigning quick keys. It was much easier and quicker to do it on the gamepad than bringing it up in the menu in the game and then doing it there. There were a lot of different controls to remember, and it did get a bit confusing at times. Luckily they did have a cheat sheet in the menu, so if you needed to remember how to do a move, you could always look it up. You could also buy new fighting moves to perform, so it can be a bit overwhelming. Now when you buy this game, all the downloadable content is already there, so you don't have to pay anything to get all the extra stuff that the other systems had to pay for. So it was nice to have an all-in-one package. Darksiders 2 was a lot of fun. It had a lot of moves for you to learn, the visuals were nice, and the dungeon designs were very fun. If you're a fan of Zelda or hack and slash games, you'll find a lot to enjoy in this title, and I definitely think it's worth a buy.